On this episode, an overview of the twin fuel tank setup on the Jaguar XJ. Welcome back to Love With A Classic. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put out new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can navigate to my channel down below. Check out some of my previous videos, and if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, and you won't miss any future videos. So in today's video, I'm going to go through something I think is commonly misunderstood. Why these cars, the XJ, the Series 1, 2, and 3, why they have twin fuel tanks. And I'm just going to start with that they're not the only Jaguars with twin fuel tanks. I mean, my 1966 S-Type has twin fuel tanks. The uh, old 420 has fuel, twin fuel tanks, the uh, 420G, and many other makes as well. There's some Maseratis with twin fuel tanks. Uh, the Lamborghini Spot, I believe, has twin fuel tanks. Uh, Lotus Esprit. So there are many manufacturers that have twin fuel tanks. But Jaguars are pretty unique that their twin fuel tanks are always completely separate. Meaning that you fill one tank at a time. It's not that you can choose one side of the car to fill up on and both tanks will fill up. No, you have to fill one side, lift up the handle, go over and fill the other side. So in that sense, it can be a little bit of a hassle, but this was done to get more boot space in these cars. So the fuel tanks are saddle tanks that are in the rear wings, so they don't really take up any space where anything else would be. It's usually just empty on many cars, or maybe the boot goes out to the side. So you have a pretty big boot because of this, or trunk, like some people like to say, However, there is an issue. How do you know which tank you're using? So Jaguar decided that you need to have a switch to manually switch between which tank you're on and each tank has their own fuel sender unit. So if you switch to the left tank, you might have half a tank there. And if you switch over to the right, you might have a full tank if you just fill that one up. So if you're driving along normally, you fill up both tanks. You might drive first on the right tank. And when that one's on empty, you can push the button and your fuel gauge will go from empty to full, which looks kind of funny, and you can keep on driving until that tank is empty. Uh, one thing that's a little funny about that is you don't have a fuel low warning light in these cars. Uh, other cars that were made at the same time by Jaguar have low fuel lights. Uh, the E-Type does, uh, Mark II also, um, XJS, all of these have low fuel lights. We'll go back on the XJS fuel system in another video because that one's also a little odd. There's also a secondary tank there, but it's very different to this. But that will be in a separate video. So back to these twin fuel tanks. So you need to manually switch between them. You can say, well, what's the problem? What can go wrong? Well, there's a lot that can go wrong. I'm going to show you an early car I have, which is the 1975 XJ6. It's not early XJ, I mean the Series 1 before that, but it has the same fuel system. So in this case, there are two separate pumps, no special valves or anything, no returns. It's a very simple fuel system. One pump operates one tank and the other pump operates the other tank. However, when Jaguar moved over to fuel injection, they decided to have one fuel pump, so one high pressure fuel pump, like most cars. However, then they need valves to choose which tank you take fuel from. So there's a, a valve that chooses where the fuel comes from and then there's another valve that chooses where the fuel goes because these fuel injection systems have returns. It's very important that you return the right fuel to the tank that you took it from. Because imagine this, imagine both tanks being completely full to the brim. You start driving on your right tank, but the um, valves are set up so it still returns to the left. What's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna start emptying the right tank while you're filling the left one with your return because the system does return a large quantity of your fuel so what will happen well the left tank will overflow run up if your cap seal is bad it will go up to, over the cap run out over your rear ring will make a huge mess and this is the thing that i've seen a lot of people ask about in forums and it's usually around spring so i thought i'd make this video and show you what the system actually does how you can check it so that if you have a car like this and you're taking it out and you suddenly have fuel overflowing everywhere you'll know where to look and you know which parts you'll have to replace. So let's have a look at the two cars I can show this on, which is the uh, XJ6 over there and an XJ12 that we'll go to in my other workshop. On all XJ series cars, I mean series one, two, and three, there is a switch to switch between the fuel tanks. 
This is a Series 2, and here is the switch. It says fuel. So when it's out, it's the right tank. And when it's in, it's the left tank. And at night, it illuminates and points towards one side of the car or the other side of the car, depending on where it's pushed in. On Series 3 cars, there's a switch up here as well. It just looks a little different. It has a symbol for a filler instead of the word fuel. And on a Series 1 car, you have a bunch of rocker switches up here below the dials, and one of those switches has the same function as this one. Here's the back of my early XJ6 Series 2, it's 1975. You can see the twin filler tanks. You have one on the left over there, and one on the right. Like I mentioned, the tanks are completely separate. They're saddle tanks. They're out here in the wing. So they go from up here about, and then all the way down over here, below the bumper as well. So that's why you have this part here. So to get them out, you need to remove the rear bumper and get these bottom halves off here. And then the tanks drop straight down. Fillers are pretty much the same on all the series, except on the later Series 3. They're a little bit higher up. They're not sunken down into the body like this. Just push like that to open them. Here's what they look like inside. Of course, there's a little flap. And there's the fuel tank in there. It's very important to keep that drain over there clean. Because if that gets clogged up, that's the water drain. And then it can fill up water around here. And if your seal is not that good over here, it can run up and fill your tanks with water. And that will, well, that will stop your car at least. On later cars, you will also have a vent that goes through here. There'll be a little hole going through here. And there'll be a hose back here. And that will go into the... Uh, evaporative system, so basically emissions, so you don't let any fuel fumes out into the atmosphere. That will either, on very early examples, it will just go in a hose here and go down onto the ground, or on later cars, it will go through here, then up through the pillar, and then somehow travel to the front of the car to then get burned off in the engine so it doesn't go into the atmosphere. This being an early car and not coming from a country with strict emissions at the time. There's a little hole in here and it just vents out through the top of the cap. So let's have a look at the early style of fuel pumps. This is the early setup of fuel pumps and it was basically the same on the Series 1s and the Series 2s that used the external pump. There were a few Series 2s that used pumps inside the tanks a bit later but many of them for most markets had these external SU pumps in the back. So you can see it's one pump for each tank, so when you push the switch inside the car, you actually switch from one pump to the other. So this is for the left tank, that's for the right tank. Basically you have fuel going through here, into the inside of that pump. Then if this pump is selected, it pumps out through here, into a T over here. And then it goes forward, through a fuel filter, and up through the car. That is not the original fuel filter. A previous owner replaced that. Originally, it's one of these with a little replaceable cartridge filter inside. It's mounted up here. You see the mounting point there. Uh, the original owner replaced this because he's he said it kept leaking. So they put in a modern filter. Nothing wrong with that, but if you want to go with originality, this is what it's supposed to look like. So while this pump is pumping, why doesn't fuel flow over into the right tank? Well, in these early cars, it's pretty simple. There's little valves in here, one-way valves in the pumps, and that stops the fuel from going from one tank to another. So there are no valves or anything in these early systems. It's just whichever pump is energized with electricity, that's the pump that pumps fuel up into the engine. So when I want to swap over to the right tank, I simply select the right tank. This pump stops pumping. This one starts pumping, so the one-way valve makes sure that the fuel doesn't flow this way, that it flows from here over until that one instead. So as you can see, the tanks are not connected together at all. They can have completely independent levels thanks to these one-way valves in the pumps. It's a pretty simple, pretty clever system and it works really well. Not really any issues with this early system a lot, not really tanks overflowing or fuel going from one tank to another. If your fuel pumps are working well, then this system works well. But now let's have a look at my Series 2 with a V12 and fuel injection 
and see how they solve that issue with the pumps and the addition of a few valves. Now this is my 1977 XJ12, it's also a Series 2, however it's fuel injected and it's a V12 so it looks a little different. First of all, there is only one pump, this one over here, it's a high pressure fuel injection pump so that's different. But there are still two tanks so how does it switch between the tanks? When you have valves here, this is the valve that switches between the tanks and this switches the return. On this earlier car, with the return system, the return goes on the left side of the car into the luggage compartment here as well and then goes over here. Uh, this is just a T from a uh, anti-bubbling thing so no errors in the system. I can talk about that a little later. But it goes down here into this valve and this valve selects which tank it returns to. So you have return lines over here at the bottom. There's a thin line here and the thick line is incoming fuel. And yes, the incoming fuel line is a lot thicker on the V12. And yep, that is needed. And then you have the other return line underneath, let's see, yeah, underneath here. So a few things are not 100% original here. I have replaced the pump with a Bosch unit. This is the pump used on later cars with the HE engine, but it works really well on the pre-HE. It's a lot more um, efficient and quieter and more reliable and also cheaper to get than the original uh, pump used for the DJ Tronic. So I replaced that a while ago when my DJ Tronic pump started sounding a little funny and also it started leaking. So it's been working really well. So basically what happens is if I select the right tank, then you get fuel coming here from the right tank up here. So this switch opens this port, closes that one. Fuel goes over here into my fuel pump. It's pumped up to a high pressure and then it goes through this thing here which basically just makes sure that no air is in the fuel. So it goes up up here and comes out down here. Any air will get blood off. It's just because you don't want any air at all going into a fuel injection system. Uh, this was removed, I believe, on later systems, but the Series 2 used it. So then the fuel goes up here, over here, and then sent over to the front of the car. Then, if you remember my videos on the DJtronic system, it has uh, two fuel pressure regulators, and those both bleed off to return into here. So that travels along the other side of the car, comes back here, goes down here, and then since I selected the right tank, this side will close, this side will be open, and the fuel will flow over into the right tank. So how do these overflow? It's pretty common for them to overflow, especially on the later Series 3, and I'll show you why, especially on the Series 3. But on the Series 2, the same thing can happen. So if these switches don't work, let's say you press the button, but both of them don't click, there might be an electrical issue, there might be something stuck, there might be rusted solid from bad fuel and just sitting for years. So you could actually be taking fuel from your right tank, but then returning it to your left. You might be saying, well, that's not that big of a deal. Well, it is. Because let's say you go to the gas station, you fill up your left tank, and you fill up your right tank, they're both full to the brim, you start driving, you take fuel out from the right tank, but you're just driving around town, so you're not using that much fuel, and most of it's being returned from the engine into the return. There's a pretty steady stream of return when the car is just idling. You can actually see it if you look down into the fuel tank. I'll show you a bit later what it looks like. If you're flowing then over into the left tank, pretty soon that tank will overflow if you're only using it from the right, and it will run up out on the outside of the car. So that's why it's vital that these switches work. So let's have a look in the tank and I'll show you where the tank fuel returns. I'm right now filming into the tank. So if you see that pipe up there, kind of right where the screwdriver is pointing, that's where the fuel returns. So that's one easy way you can check that your valves are working correctly. And here's what it looks like running. A steady stream of fuel returning. I'm running on the left tank and it's returning fuel to the left tank. So as I mentioned, the Series 3 is a little different. Unfortunately, I don't have a Series 3 that I can show, but I can explain how it works, because half of it is pretty much the same as on this car. The incoming side of fuel still goes from two tanks on one side. There's still a switch here, or a valve, that goes over to a pump. This all is not here, and then it pumps over there. There's a fuel filter over there, and it goes up into the engine bay. 
this car has a fuel filter in the engine bay like the early V12s did. But on the Series 3, the fuel filters are all back here. So the incoming side of the fuel, or the source, is still the same. You still have the valve here that selects both tanks. However, you don't have the return that goes in here. The return still travels down the middle of the car, or the left side of the car. Then when it comes back to the rear end, it splits in two and it goes to each wheel well. So it goes back into the wheel well. And then before going into the tanks, there's a little inspection here to see the tank sender. Before going in there, you will have that little valve over there. So instead of just having two valves, you have three. One that selects the tanks, like I did on both sides on this one, and then one valve on each side of the wheel well that lets fuel return to either tanks. So because they're round elements, there's a bigger chance that they will fail as well instead of having them back here. So that is the main difference. But everything else is the same. You can still check which tank it returns to. It should still work when you look into the tank. You should be able to see if it's flowing fuel or not. That's the same on the Series 3 as well. And that's it for this episode of Live With A Classic. I hope it was clear and that you guys could easily understand now how the fuel systems work. If you have any questions, you can always ask them down below. Unfortunately, I don't have a Series 3 card to show how it works with the three valves, but I hope that the way I explained it, you guys could still understand because it's pretty easy to actually have a look at a Series 2 car because everything is more exposed on the Series 2s with fuel injection and you can kind of understand how the valves work. The only difference is that there's one more valve on the Series 3, but everything works exactly the same. So if you have any questions or comments, you can always post them down below and I'll answer all of them as fast as I can. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of videos. And until next time, I'm Adam and this was Loom with a Classic. I'll see you soon.